There's a lot of excitement with the 2020 Silver Libertads. Are they worth it? I've already made a few mistakes along the way. If you want to learn from my mistakes and see how these can still be a valuable member of your stack or collection, stick around. Welcome to Silver Heist. Thank you to our returning subscribers and guests. We're a channel that likes to buy physical gold and silver, and we like a coin with a good story. If you like those things, please subscribe. I am primarily a stacker, but I do have some coins that I'm interested in collecting or some coins I'm interested in buying in order to sell them at a higher price so that I can add more to my stack. So I like government bullion, but I've never bought the Libertads until this year. So I've made a few mistakes along the way. I'm going to share my mistakes with you so that you can learn from them. So it looks to many people that the 2020 Silver Libertads could be a valuable addition to your stack or collection. And so let's separate fact from fiction, from hype. See if they are worth it. But more importantly, learn from my early mistakes with the Libertad coin so that you can better maximize your results. So what does the Silver Libertads have that these government bullion coins don't have? Well, the Silver Libertads have two things going for it, if you know what I mean. Low mintage and dedicated fan base. So I have a lot of facts and figures to show you because I wanted to really do a deep dive into what makes the Libertad special and is 2020 a extra special year, meaning it will be extra valuable. And so at the very end, I will share with you three mistakes that I have made in pursuit of these Libertads. And so I wish I knew when I bought some what I knew now so I'll share with you what I've learned so that before these sell out, you can make the, your best decisions. So the first challenge about the Libertads is not only is it a low mintage one ounce coin, but there are many sizes to choose from. There is a rabbit hole of choices to be made. Different fractional size, silver coins to one ounce, two ounce, five ounce, and even kilogram. And not only is there BU finish, there is also proof finish in similar fractional one, two, and five ounce coins. So there's a lot of choices to be made, too many choices. So the first thing to understand is that it, in the one ounce size, it is typically a lower mintage coin. Whereas this coin, despite the troubles at the US Mint, they have already made 28 million of these in 2020 and counting, where as we see from some of these early years, the Libertad is a 1 million minted coin or less. I've broken my analysis into different sizes. So let's look at the fractionals. Let's treat the fractionals as one group. So 1 20th, 1 tenth, 1 quarter, 1 half. This is for 2020. This is the highest mintage ever. This is the lowest mintage ever, and this is an average mintage. So at first blush, it is 2020 is way lower than the highest, decently lower than the average, and not quite as good as the lowest. And if we drill into the 2020 versus lowest, it's not quite the lowest. It's decently okay but not quite the lowest. By listening to Louis Silver and some other people, I've decided to not dive into the fractional BU coins because they seem to be a higher premium and to be more of a collectible coin. So I looked at the one ounce or higher as a hybrid of stacking coin and collectible coin. And so the one that could have interested me is the half ounce. It is actually not that low compared to the lowest ever. The BU one ounce in 2020 is way lower than the highest ever, lower than average, but not 
very low compared to the lowest ever. And drilling into that a little bit more, it's seemingly about half of average and three or four times more than the lowest of the low. Now, the only thing saving it is that over a 25 year period, it's lower than average 2020. And this is a collection of the nine lowest years. So it's not as low as the lowest. So there's two tiers of low, the best and then pretty darn good and then average. So it's way better than average, but it's not the best. It's kind of in the second tier. So looking at the two ounce and five ounce BU coins, the two ounce in 2020 is way less than the most, less than average and pretty darn close to the lowest. Whereas the five ounce is not that much less than the high, kind of a bit much above the lowest and pretty close to average. So not looking too favorable for the five ounce. And if we look into it closer, yes, this is very close to the best year ever. And the five ounce is frankly more than an average year. So the five ounce 2020 is not that special. And it's a little bit more of a niche coin. So the one ounce and the two ounce to me are more attractive option. So looking at the mintages of 2020 over the lowest year ever, if it was 100%, it would be equal to the lowest ever. And if it was lower, better than that, it would be even a lower percentage. So I'm saying that I like the one in the two ounces right now. And the one ounce looks like it's four and a half times more than the lowest, whereas the two ounces may be one and a half times more than the lowest. And the fractionals, I've just decided not to play this game, but these aren't that bad compared to the lowest. So when you compare it to the average, it's half of the average. And then frankly, like I said before, the five ounce is even more than the average. 2020 over an average year, if it was less than 100%, it's better than average. If it's higher than 100%, it's worse than average. So the five ounce is worse than average. So now that we have two simplified ways of looking at this across all the sizes, let's just take a quick peek at the proof coins. So the proof coins compared to the low is about two and a half to three and a half times more than the lowest. And then compared to the average, it's creeping up to close to average and even more than average. So the two ounce and five ounce proofs are almost twice as many as an average year. So when we compare average proof to average BU, these are all in the 100%. These are all like 40% or better, where these are kind of creeping up to 80 or 90%. So the proofs are kind of closer to an average year. And on compared to the lowest, there's quite a few more of these, two, three times more than the lowest of the low, where the BU compared to the low, you know, one and a half times the low. So the proof game is more of a collectible coin. It's not a game that I wanted to play. If it's something that you're familiar with, you can enter this game, but I think these numbers will show that is 2020 is not that special a year when it comes to mintages for proof coins. So what are the one and two ounces worth? You go over to eBay and you look at so recently sold items and you can dive into it. So if you go over to eBay and look at a lower mintage one ounce coin, we'll see how it compares. We'll see what the potential is. So here's 1999, over a hundred dollars, 130, 150. So that's a quick look. So that's the best of the best. If we look at the second tier, which is what I think this one ounce coin is, then we might be talking 70, 75, $80. And if we look at the two ounce low mintage 2006 key date, we're looking at a $150 coin. So. 
there seems to be potential that a two ounce coin with the best of the best low mintage could be worth upwards of $150. And maybe the one ounces are worth closer to the 70 ish dollar range. So as I wait to put the Libertads into my government bullion stack and collection, what mistakes have I made so far? My first mistake is I was anticipating these so much that the first opportunity to buy from Hong Kong from LPM, I jumped on it. So I was too impetuous in buying the coins from Hong Kong where they sold some and then they went out of inventory and I paid shipping. So I paid over $700. Well, they were Hong Kong dollars, but that increased my price of each of my coins. So my coins are now probably $1.50 or $2 more than they should have been because I, I wanted them so soon that I'm paying for international shipping. Now, if I held out for monument metals, I could have avoided the shipping and got about the same price. So I was too much of in a rush to get my hands on the coins. I don't think it will sting me too bad, but I spent more than I should have because I'm paying for shipping. My second mistake is that I strictly went for the one ounce coin. So I'm getting a tube of coins and I kind of wish that instead of 25 one ounce coins that maybe I bought 15 one ounce and five two ounces. So get 25 ounces that way. I wish that I had diversified a little bit on size and had done enough research up front that I would have known that for 2020, the one ounce coin is a special year, but the two ounce coin is an extra special year. So that was my second mistake. Which brings me to my third and final mistake. And it's a mistake I swear I should have seen coming. And it's a mistake I've known for decades and possibly since I was a teenager. And that is this. Never underestimate the impact on a man's decision-making abilities when there is the prospect of exposed boobies.